Hello. 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 Welcome to the Naoto's Nerdy Power Hour. New, new and improved with good cameras. Good cameras. <laughs> well, I don't know, probably the cameras. overhead cameras, this camera. Well, welcome. The, uh, today, I think some of you have been waiting for a little while, but the, uh, today we are going to talk about some natural stone collections that we just got them in a while ago. But before we actually get into the, all the natural stones that we have today, we have some announcements and news that we want to talk about. So Nathan will start, and uh, I'm going to follow that. Hello, hello folks, I'm Nathan. Uh, <laughs> most of you probably know me. Uh, the guy behind the camera. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so welcome to the show. Uh, we've got some exciting news for today. Um, lots of exciting things coming up in the next few weeks. First of all, this just showed up in the warehouse yesterday. This is uh, the Pigeon. This is our zine that we've been making. Uh, started making this summer. Volume 2 has just arrived. I'm going to switch to the overhead camera now to if you want to show uh, a sneak peek of some of the pages here. Um, but this is just cool little culture pieces done by our staff. So um, poetry or DIY, how to make a guitar knife magnet, um, recipes, uh, just thoughts and, and, and feelings on things that relate to food and music and all sorts of other good stuff that we like. So that is now available in... Uh, in stores, uh, sorry, it's available in stores probably starting in about a week and a bit, um, and that will be uh, online going into every online order until we run out. Yep. So, yeah, if you order something on the website. So, yeah, this, this okay. goes onto the uh, package. Um, we should be putting this one in the orders that we are sending from the uh, store, too, right? Yeah, from the yeah. warehouse, yeah. yeah. Oh, from the stores, maybe? No? I think so, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so every, uh, every online order, you get this fun, you know, little small read up. Yeah, uh, things there's, here. there's some neat stuff in that. Yeah. Um, okay, the next bit of news we have is uh, we have charity sharpening happening next yes. week. Um, we do this semi regularly, well, you know, a couple times a year. Mm. Um, at the end of the month, September 30th, is Orange Shirt Day in, in Canada, as well as the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So from uh, Monday, September 25th to October uh, 1st, the Sunday, 100% uh, of sharpening proceeds will go to charities in the cities that we mm -hmm. have stores in, Calgary, Edmonton, Ottawa, mm -hmm. Vancouver, Toronto. Um, and those, will, so yeah, 100% of proceeds will go to charities that um, support the local indigenous community in mm -hmm. some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, the Knifeware Foundation will match those donations. So uh, yeah, bring great time to get your knife sharpened, yep. you know? Um, and especially before the holiday rush, too. Yeah. Uh, also next week, Masashi Yamamoto-san is going to be visiting Calgary. Oh, now has got his shirt on. Yeah. I didn't wear mine. I should have worn mine. Yeah, but Naoto's wearing the right shirt. I, I, I thought of, like, should I wear orange shirt or massage shirt today? Because it both both has a, you know, mm. good meaning. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got to support Masashi son yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he's going to be in the in Knifework, Calgary, September 28th, uh, engraving knives and giving a bit of a talk as well. Mm. And then he will be in the Toronto location Sunday, October 1st. Mm. He'll be engraving knives. He'll be giving a talk, mm -hmm. but he'll also be judging a knife sharpening competition in Toronto. In Toronto, in Toronto. Yeah. yeah. Did I say Toronto? Just Toronto. Yeah. Okay. No, just Toronto. Okay. Yeah, just in just Toronto. Just Toronto, Toronto. So if you want to enter that, um, there's a link in the bio. Takes you to a blog um, about his visit, and there's mm. a link you can sign up for the sharpening competition. Competition. Yeah. Um, you'll have 30 minutes to sharpen. All skill levels are welcome. You're gonna bring your own gear, but we'll supply the knife and some of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so that should be a good time. Uh, yep. A chance to meet Masashi san and get your knife engraved. Absolutely. He'll also bring some limited edition knives that he's made. Yeah, and it's it's, it's going to be only available at the stores first. And if there's leftovers, you may be able to uh, see them or purchase them online as well. But Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else uh, What else will he be doing? Oh, we have some limited edition tour shirts uh, right. for his visit as well. Right. Um, yeah, so it should be a good time. Hello, everybody that, that's mm -hmm. tuning in. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in, folks. Good yeah. to see you all. Um, in addition to Masashi's visit, next weekend we're also going to be at Terroir. So if you're in Calgary, if you're in the industry, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, keep your eyes open for us there. We're going to mostly be filming stuff. Sky and I are going to be running and gunning the whole time. But now until we'll be doing a sharpening mm -hmm. uh, workshop for chefs that are there. Yeah. We're gonna, they're gonna be butchering like a whole elk and using some traditional stone tools. So it's, it's gonna be really cool. Yeah. Uh, and then in October, we've got Lefty Week, uh, probably mid-October. We've got a whole bunch of left-handed single bevels and scissors. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. those are difficult things to get. So, you know, we wanna, 
want to uh, value our left-handed computers. Yeah, we, we here. got we got some like super cool um, Honesuki that is like super left-handed. So as the Honesuki Maru, which we never seen it before. It, we mm. yeah, we basically uh, specifically asked them to sharpen like a really left-handed bevel. So uh, Honesuki Maru, Honesuki, quite a few uh, single bevel knives as well as the yeah kitchen shears that's made for uh, left-handed people. Yeah, so, so stay tuned for that if you are left-handed or love somebody who is left-handed. Yeah. Um, and then garage sale is in November. Uh, that is happening November, I think, the 6th. I'm going to pull up my calendar here. I know, it's super uh, approaching really it's coming, fast. Coming quick. Yeah, the Knife for Garage Sale, Monday 6th to the 12th. Um, so that is a, an exciting time of year where we get all sorts of unusual knives, mm -hmm. stuff from new makers, uh, lines we don't normally carry. We'll have a, a bunch of stuff on sale. Uh, yep. So great gifts for the holidays. Yep. A bit of everything. Scratch and dent. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Some, uh, some super cool things. Uh, we got the one, maybe two by the time the garage sale happening, but the uh, we have knife that forced by Manaka-san, mm -hmm. but he sent the knife to um, Myojin-san to sharpen. So it's basically, you know, Manaka-san forced and Myojin-san sharpen. There's like breaking news. Breaking uh, news. Yeah, yeah. Breaking news. Talking about those tour shirts. It's they here. Ju they just showed up in the warehouse. It's, so these are super so limited. So it's the front. Uh, we'll have 30 in Calgary, 30 in Toronto. Masashi and the back. Yeah, oh, I yeah. love this. Mason designed this. He did a killer job based off of like 70s uh, rock band shirts. Yeah. 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 That looks super cool. It is one of um, his uh, world tour stops. Uh, they are starting in, uh, he is starting in Calgary and he flies to Toronto. So it's got the, the not so much the dates, but you know, it's got the, uh, you know, cities that he's going to visit. So, I mean, like, if you are, I guess, um, tuning in from somewhere in those cities, you may be able to see him in person. Yeah. Again, you know, this is the YouTube, so. And if we have any of his special edition knives or shirts left over, they will be available online uh, the week after his visit. Yeah. Uh, this isn't a piece of news, but just before we get started, Taliban said, got my two Denkas and my Nigara back from being sharpened by you guys the other day. Super happy with Good. them. Thanks so much. And asking if the garage sale takes place online too, which it does. It's mm -hmm. it's in store and online, and we have exclusives for both the web store mm -hmm. and the online store, so that nobody has to miss out on cool stuff. Yeah, so that's exciting time. It's uh, plenty of things happening. Um, mm -hmm. Terroir is something that I'm I'm pretty excited about. So as the massage sons visit next week, um, I'm not sure. This is a new camera for me to me, so I'm not sure how wide the lens is. I don't know if anyone's seen this like. Like <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of the, uh, I, I just tried something new. Uh, you know, Genesis, I guess, like, right? Yeah. We call it the uh, Mega Drive. Oh, the Mega in, Drive, yeah. In Japan, That's I a think. family heirloom. That was my grandfather's Sega Genesis. Yeah, yeah. No joke. So, uh, yeah, yeah it's, I, you know, didn't know what to do with it. So, Anyways. Well, today's topic is natural stones. Natural stones, a whole bunch of mysteries, a lot of uh, things that, people don't really know about. Mm -hmm. We don't know everything yet. Um, but we are in a good position where uh, we, we kind of go to Japan time to time and see those people who's been dealing with natural stones for quite some time. Um, like last, while, quite a while ago, the, when I went to see the, one, of the, um, one of the people there, uh, Imanishi-san gave me uh, this tiny booklet. It, the, uh, it is really good resource on, you know, where those history and what they are made out of, how they are made, those kind of stuff. So this is really good resource um, for me, at least. You know, only one person in this office who can <laughs> read the uh, Japanese. <laughs> yeah. And there are so many words that's like it cannot, it cannot basically translate, right? They're like... Anyways, so this has been helping me quite a bit, um, but natural stones, basically, as the name suggests, it's a stone, <laughs> right? Mine, and the ones that we carry mostly are mine in the, this area in Kyoto. Kyoto, I don't know if you've ever been. Kyoto is like this old capital. Uh, they've been, they were in, from the capital from the seven, or just the, the, the last year is like 794, uh, so it's like, you know, almost the end of the 8th century, and all the way 
to the uh, so Edo. So Edo wasn't really capital. So it was like a capital for a very very long time until the Meiji Restoration. So it's like 18, uh, 1864 or something like that. So the thousand year old capital, uh, they have rich history. So as they, um, there, is a, there are several mountains and uh, mines that they could get this natural uh, sharpening stones, right? So they look like these, yeah, I'll do the, the overhead. And, and I, I should say right from the outset, folks, um, to set some expectations a little bit. For those of you that tune in regularly, you know, we, we sharpen a couple of knives, we get nerdy. Um, today we're not gonna be doing a lot of sharpening, we're just gonna get super nerdy, talk about a lot of history and sharpening stuff. Um, but we will we will be launching these stones that we're showing you for sale mm -hmm. um, in a little bit. We're gonna get people familiar with them so they know what they're looking at, and then uh, probably by about three, we'll, we'll launch them on mm -hmm. the website. But there's a link in the bio if you wanna, or in the description if you wanna check them out online while we talk about them. Um, but yeah, as so, always, ask questions, get in there, and we will get to them later. Yeah, so something like this, um, it's, some of them look as rough as this. Some of them, they cut into a nice rectangular piece. It looks like, uh, you know, the regular sharpening stone, but on the back, um, it's pretty rough. Um, the ones that we get, we don't usually have them, um, they call it the uh, yojo or the uh, lacquered or urushi lacquered on the outside, but the, you guys can do that at home. We could do it, we need uh, some special um, things from Japan to do that, the uh, you know, coating on the outside, so we, we won't bother doing it, but the, um, they get it from the um, mounds, like they, you know, they, these are all sedimentary stones you know you know it's like sediments it the uh, it takes about a thousand years to uh, get about a millimeter thickness um <laughs> yeah and, and so this guy's i don't know i don't know four mil four centimeters maybe thick four or five yeah centimeters so right 40, so thousand years only 40 or fifty thousand years yeah, yeah. no big so, deal no big deal yeah. um but the um slow sedimentary rocks with the um, at the time the oh I sh I should have um, I should have done the a little bit of um, what you call like the uh, translation but the um, so at the time the ocean were filled with this type of prank plankton yeah, is that P P L P R P L yeah. P L so it's a whole bunch of plankton that is um, the the structure was made with the, um, the di, uh, s s no, silicon, silica, mm -hmm. S SI, is it silicon? Yeah. So the uh, silicon dioxide. So it's the, it's like a glass. Right. But to, to oxygen. So it's like a, it's the same kind of structure. It was the, the living organisms, but the, it was, um, their bone or their, Outer structure was made with the uh, silicon dioxide, so it was when it's pressed it down, it became a uh, small like silicon dioxide that became a abrasives. Mm. That particular thing, you know, it's like a crystal, right? Um, so it's hard. It's um, it's hard enough to work on the most of the steels. The, if you look, if you know a little bit of like most coke. Uh, most hardness, the you know, like to check the hardness of the stones. Mm -hmm. Diamond is ten, right? Uh, this uh, steel is about like six. Where that um, the the silicon carbide, the dioxide is the about seven. So it's hard enough and scratches right. the steel. It essentially, needs to be harder than the steel in order to yeah, exactly. To, to scratch it, or, yeah, yeah. Or do anything. Cool. cool. Yeah. So that's how they uh, made. Different mountains, different um, pressure, different uh, places, they have different hardness of mainly on the base, you know, what this made out of, what this stone is mainly made out of, right? More pressure will make the much more denser stone. Oftentimes, that is what the, um, what kind of determines how fine that, that those stones can be. Because what happens is that as you work on the stones longer, you'll be building a mud. 
and that mud will break it down those like small silicon dioxide into smaller pieces that thus it makes it a little bit more finer right because right, basically, basically natural stones if i understand correctly work by you scratch up a little bit of the material from the surface mm. mix and it mixes with water and the more you grind the finer and finer and finer and finer. Yeah. So the more time you spend on it the finer your grit your yeah. grit so to speak yeah. we're not we're using grit a bit loosely here but the, the finer your grit exactly and where if you use that the softer type of stone you are exposing more fresher coarser material cell so that it doesn't get as fine so the harder stones sorry, sorry the harder stones will retain the finer grit longer than the softer stones it'll break it it'll have the time for those the abrasives to break it down in smaller pieces right, right before, before it releases more yeah exactly yeah, yeah. okay cool and, and is the is the you talk about pressure? Mm. Is it safe to say then that the further the closer to the base of a mountain something is, the further down into the ground it is, the more pressure it experiences? Or is is are there more factors at play? There's some more factors in play. You know, like mountains, like they are they were sedimentary rocks, so that the they were formed under like underneath of the ocean, right? Mm. So um, yes, the 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 deeper or the core deeper that the ocean, the floor is, it can get more pressure, but it's, you're talking about, you know, much deeper, like, you know, it's, it's a fraction. Like if you look at some of the um, stuff here, the, one of the best or finest or the smoothest or the, one of the considered to be the best um, stones are often find in the kind of middle. Hmm. So there's the middle center, center part, they call it to, Tomae. Um, can, can you show us that page? Yeah. So this here, Tomae is in the middle here. The uh, Suita Hachimae, like it kind of goes this. And this part you can't use like both here, right? So that's kind of how it goes. Um, but it really depends on the mountains as well. Tomae doesn't mean the uh, layers. Tomae basically means, well, it does kind of mean the, um, the layer, but Tomae means, literally means in front of the door. Uh, basically what happens is that the, um, you know, they just stack those with the best stones in front of the uh, door of the um, storage so that they can, uh, they can, they have easy access to they, they they're the ones who makes money right yeah. and they can start yeah so that that's where the name comes from um anyways so the reason why we're doing this today is that the, we got the hands on the uh, some of the really rare pieces of uh, stones and some we got stones that without any information that's why we wanted to actually throw this there are stones that we have good information of who made who um, mind it and uh, where, it's, where it's from and there are actually nine of those that we have that doesn't have any information so traditionally in Japan what well, if you go to Japan and you know see those uh, natural stone um, retailers what they will let you do is that they will actually let you try on stones like you know bring your own knives and test it on like you know depends on how hard you're how hard the, the stone is and it's all, all preference right so instead of doing that we decided to throw this session so that you will be able to see how muddy this stone is how hard this stone is I'm going to test them on the uh, this kiridashi knife um, small bevel I did flatten the bevel yesterday so it's pretty nice and flat there's no low spots or anything like that um, makes it a little bit easy for visually to see how what kind of uh, finish that is going to add to this uh, knives or what these stones will do and also you'll be able to see that the, how muddy those stones can be and stuff like that so that's what we're going to do uh, today we have some uh, very rare uh, stones especially the rarest one is going to be this guy here no no printing no nothing except on the side um, for those of you who knows a little bit about the um, natural stone world, uh, this got the Maruka Ashohonyama on them. Maruka is uh, means it is mined 
uh, from the uh, Kato, uh, by a Kato Kozan. Kato Kozan is this um, uh, company, or yeah, I guess company, mining company, uh, who was the, run by the Kato-san in the, in the Kyoto area. And, and they own the uh, part of uh, Nakayama, which is the, uh, they call it most pre prestigious mound. Um, it is like cent center of all the uh, eastern part of um, mining um, section in Kyoto. Uh, they call it Higashimono or the eastern. And the uh, Nakayama is like one of those mounds that were well known for, I guess. There are other, like say, mines right around them, but Nakayama was the uh, mountain. And Kato uh, family owned that mound for a very long time. They stopped mining it for quite some time ago. And one of the reasons why we were actually able to get this um, Maruka stones is that the, um, the family who, there are only like few families who are allowed to sell this Maruka stones. And um, one of the families, the uh, Hataya, Hata, Hatanaka-san. Hatanaka-san uh, business, uh, they just, they didn't have anyone, um, I guess, passing the torch, anyone to pass the torch. <laughs> Too, so uh, they decided actually to uh, close their business down. So there are quite a few, you know, Maruka um, Shohonyama from Nakayama stones around. So um, what the this one we got it from Imanish san is that the uh, they basically distribute those like rare stones to the uh, you know stone uh, people around Kyoto. Mm. So that's how I got the, we got this. Uh, Shohonyama Maruka Nakayama uh, stone. That's beautiful um, yellow. Is this the of. one that's? Uh, yeah, this is the two, one that. Two thousand small Canadian dollars. Yeah, this is the two thousand yeah. dollars. It's sixty type and it's got a nice uh, thickness to it too. It's beautiful yellow um, tamagoyo. The uh, the little bit of um, what you want to call it the uh, egg eggshell eggish type of color to it. Right. Super smooth. I will try very few uh, strokes on this one and see how muddy it gets and I clean it up. Um, so, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm pretty curious. Yeah, because some of these, is it is it the, the case that like they have no paper trail? Is that why we don't know much about them? Or is it just that? They often saw them by the look as well. They look at these and, you know, see... And the, and these are people that just know a, an absolute crap ton about natural stones, yeah. eyeballing it and, and kind of going, uh, yeah, yeah. kind of you know, based this, on my yeah, yeah. experience, it looks like this and this. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So that's I mean that's something to know about not like for for those of you who are coming into this today as an amateur, including myself, the things to know is that there, from what I've learned, there are very few absolutes in the world of natural stones. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. Like there are there are some absolutes, like say. Mountains like the uh, this one we we have like, very occasionally, very rarely we have these stones. Um, this one is still active from the active mine, right? Mm -hmm. The um, the Totoria san in the uh, in the Tamba area they still mine them. This is the uh, you can this is sweet uh, sh not a shiro suita. This is the Gokujo shiro suita. From them uh, you can tell there's su in the middle and it's really nice piece here and they're still actively mining it so it's it's really easy um, those uh, kato maruka nakayamas are really hard because the mountains closed they basically had that uh, you know that ba not a dead stock but the stocks were kind of kicking around for a little while so as the uh, these guys like we have <coughs> quite a few we call it shohonyama we they think Imanisan didn't even know where these uh, fr these are exactly from. Uh, he is um, guessing these are from the uh, Higashimono, which is the um, kind of in the uh, eastern part of the uh, all the mines are. Um, generally, it's a little bit harder than the Nishimono, that the western ones slightly softer, generally speaking, uh, but. Uh, we asked them to put the Shohonyama, which basically means the uh, stones from Kyoto. Mm. So that's why we wanted to tr test it out and see uh, see how how they react. Cool. Yeah. 
Um, the the other thing I was going to mention, um, if for beginners, if uh, and and you've kind of touched on it a couple times, the natural stones are often very difficult to get. There's a reason we often don't have a lot for sale, and they can often be really expensive. And mm. both of those reasons are because they are literally mined out of a mm. mountain, and there are probably few fewer mines than ever still operational, right? Like I think one or two. One or two. Yeah. That's well, it. One or two. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's, it, they're, they're not getting that many of those. No. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think one or two. I know that the, uh, this uh, Totoria-san in the Kyoto, Kameoka, he's still doing it pretty actively. But I know the Nakayama's closed. Ozuku's closed. Ozuku may be the only one. But yeah, there are a lot, like, a lot of those mounds have already been closed. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's hard. Like, you know, if you go to actually uh, see uh, Imanish-san's uh, place, the, uh, his office wall, the outside ex exterior wall, is basically filled with those natural stones. <laughs> like, use the mortar. Wow. Yeah, like... They're just everywhere. I, I, I'm They're sure, he, out of I'm sure like, you know, at the end, he's probably going to start taking those mortar off and take those natural stones off from his wall. Oh, like, they're actually stuck in the actually, wall. Actually, yeah, stuck oh, in the wall. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. yeah some people hide. Some people hide like money in the walls by putting like dollar bills yeah, in yeah. there. He just puts extremely rare pieces of mountains on his wall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we got lots of other stuff we're going to touch on today. Mm. Now, uh, folks, uh, we got some great questions from our, our friends in the Discord to kind of get you know some jumping off points later in the yeah. show. But if you have other questions, keep them coming. Um, I assume you're going to get into starting to show some of these off. Pretty yeah. Pretty quick. Yeah. Okay, um, in the meantime then, uh, yeah, uh, we've got a few things I just wanted to catch up really quick. Just a couple questions. Um, when you're holding that first stone, the really rough one, mm -hmm. uh, that, yeah, the one you have in your hand yeah. now, uh, JJ Shane was asking, is that a copa that, Na or a copa that Na Nato's holding? So here is the, um, so the different names, right? The, um, oh yeah, I guess like touch base on the different names. Um, so... These are actually, they, they call it, so this one here, or this one here, is again, kind of weird uh, naming convention here. Um, this, the two, two grand uh, stone here, it's, a, it's called 60 type. So basically they, uh, they cut into the shapes and they, um, usually the, uh, those are the, the sizes, so the one box can fit 60 of. Okay. 60 giddy? Like so, like if you see the number numbering like a twenty-four, or the uh, sixty, or thirty, that's basically how many uh, stones can fit in certain size of box. Okay. Interesting. So so it's a roundabout way of describing the size. Yeah. Kind of like uh, so that the like smaller gauge and shotgun, yeah. it's like twelve or twenty depending on. Yeah. 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 Got the it. smaller that is, it becomes bigger. And the uh, thir between 30 and 40, it's actually the uh, uh, 40 is the one that has the little uh, side missing or something like that. So it's the it's like imperfect shape usually like this. Um, also, there are things like a um, koppa. Koppa means a uh, small piece, and literally in Japanese. So this one here. If it were smaller than this, it probably would be called koppa. They were calling this as a razor type. Basically, we have something like this typical, we call it the razor. Um, this is good to sharpen the razors with. Have it in your hand, doing this. And that would be, I mean, you could do a European straight razor on that, but design for like uh, Japanese kamisori. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you could, but traditionally, the reason why they call it razor is the, uh, you know, the size, right? So we have size 60, we have, yeah, yeah, mostly a size 60 ones here. Uh, sometimes we get a koppa, which is slightly smaller than razor, right? So this one they call it razor. This is the uh, Shohonyama Natural Stone Razor Three. Sh the the pictures should be on the website to yeah, look at. Yeah, they are. This guy did some great photos for us. So mm -hmm. there's a link in the um, description of this video uh, that you can click to take you to the Natural Stone page. 
Um, so there's all the ones that we have on that we've had on sale on the website for a while. But the ones you're looking at, they're currently stay out of stock. We're gonna put them into stock once once we give folks a chance to like figure them out because there might be some folks waiting to buy one. Mm -hmm. So we've got the Maruka. We've got uh, four different stones from them that you can check out. And mm -hmm. then we also got the Shohonyama and we have nine of those. Yeah. So 13 stones in total. Yeah. Yeah. So when Nacho's talking about those, those are the brands you're going to look at or the, the names you're going to look at on the natural stone page. Yeah. So that's, that's the, uh, that's the kind of basic, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, we got time for a few other quick questions. Yes. Well, you know, this one will, we'll, we'll get to all your questions in a bit, but this one will kind of, um, start us off. Mm -hmm. you're going to do a little testing mm -hmm. so shaked tea asked what's your preferred tool to test natural stones mm, that's good question and the um this is my answer uh i'm testing the uh, natural stone i'm testing on this kiridashi knife you know it's it's a really small um crafty do anything type of knife you can cut the leather with it and stuff like that um <clears throat> the reason why i like to use this is that the uh, this uh, as long as you make the uh, bevel nice and flat it gives you really nice the the kiridashi will give the nice feedback on how the bevel is going to react right so um, it touches on the stone pretty flat entirely and gives you really nice either you know too soft uh, or too hard or you know the coarseness um, consistency evenness that kind of stuff so i really like to test it on the kiridashi you could test it on something like um kanna which is the uh you know like plain blades or you can test it on and and best really way to test is really uh your own tool but since you know, beveling, especially kitchen knives, the beveling is all, not always like super, super straight or flat, makes it a little bit of hard. So I liked a little bit of shoulder and basically whole bevel touches on the stone and just be able to uh, see. Um, so that's why I use the Kiridashi knife. Again, I did work a little bit on this particular Kiridashi yesterday, made sure that the bevel is nice and flat because this Kiridashi is one of those little bit inexpensive made it's not this you know super super well handmade yeah ones. there's not a dude spending two hours making the bevel perfect yeah. like uh, like some of our folks we like to watch so or, yeah I or us yeah, so i spent, <laughs> like to spend time doing i spent 30 minutes yesterday to just flatten it and did, did that stuff so do you, do you want to show us in the top down camera there real quick yeah. yeah just so folks can see yeah so that's what that's what not just gonna be testing on any particular reason why that's a good good tool to test i mean it's not gonna you're not going to be using too much of the stone exactly. surface area. Exactly. That that too. Yeah. Cool. Right. So that's why, like, I don't want like this will be you know sold, <laughs> hopefully. Mm. So I'm just going to use that the tiny bit of. Yeah, blood. and the only reason we don't normally do this with any of our products, but the only reason we're testing these is because a that's that's how it's done traditionally in mm -hmm. Japan, and and b with natural stones, there's no way to know for sure until you you yeah. start sharpening. So, so this way you know what you're getting if you want to buy one. Yeah. So this uh, steel. Is probably SK4. It's a little bit less expensive carbon steel, uh, softer iron on the, on top. So you can, you know, that may give you a good good idea of how how this reacts to the natural stones. Hardness is probably about 58 to 60 type of stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do you want to give her? Yeah. Good. Okay. Cool. So first off, it's it's here. It's sitting there. So uh, I'm going to test this a. Uh, so it is under Shohonyama, natural stone, the razor type three. There are at least three, four razor types. Mm -hmm. So you can see them on the um, on our website. I'm just gonna actually flip it so that I get to use a little bit of bigger part here. So yeah, if you're if you're watching and this is one that you are interested in. This guy is the Shohonyama and that's the razor. Three. three? Yep. Razor three. Yeah. 135 Canadian, so pretty inexpensive. I have one like this at home because um, I could afford it. So I'm going to do very short strokes like this. And, and so, all right, Nato, are you looking for a feel or anything, or is this just a visual test? The feel, too. The okay. uh, how soft that is. See, like, as soon as I started just rubbing it, 
it starts to get the little black, dark uh, black slurry. It's pretty good. It does give the really nice feedback. Um, pretty soft. But let's see. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm so, gonna, so a softer stone is going to mean, I mean, it's going to probably be a little easier for somebody like me who's a bit less skilled to polish on, hey, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to fill in any more of the, the higher low spots on the bevel. One of the things about the natural stone is that it's extremely difficult to get to the uh, mirror polish mm -hmm. because the, uh, each um, abrasives are in different sizes. The uh, light reflection is going to be a uh, very random, right? The mirror right, is yeah. very mirror because the light f reflects back at you, at the very yeah, uh, really consistently. Any yeah. beam, any any photon that hits it is going to bounce back yeah. in a specific way. As a, so, it, it, basically, what you're saying is the photons that hit it are going to scatter in every, yeah, exactly. every which direction. Okay. So so, but you are going to get a, a more. Is that, is that then why natural stones are better for Kasumi finishes, more of the foggy, kind of mm -hmm, cloudy looking mm -hmm. finishes? Cool. I like those because they're a lot less work than mirror finishes. <laughs> um, cool, we'll keep the questions coming, folks. So here, yeah, just going to work a little bit more. Again, as I said, more you work on that those mud or the slurry, it will break it oh, down. Watch your head. I know, I know. So here. So, so right now you're just kind of seeing how the slurry breaks down and how that affects the, how, how that affects the steel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is pretty, so like first a couple of strokes, I saw a little bit more deeper. I still see them here. It probably is going to break it down as I do a bit more. But um, first touch, uh, before it gets all the um, like nice and smooth, I saw a little bit of streaks uh, left on the blade, um, it's, which is like two. I can two, see the two streaks right at the tip here. But as you move... Can you angle it towards yourself a little more in there? Yeah, there we go. Two lines here, maybe? You can't really see them, can you? Yeah, it's, it's tough to see, but if you kind of angle, do the motorcycle movement there, we should be able to see. And then, yeah, just put your hand out flat there, Nanto. A little to your left. A little to your left, Nanto. My, that's my right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Yeah, so I'm seeing some scratches in a pretty consistent direction. Yeah, so, so this is fine, but the little deeper ones at the very tip, two lines that goes in, maybe. I'm going to show you, like, these two. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. no, we can see this. I'm just uh, okay. getting Camera to focus. Oh, there. A bit of trouble. Well, I, I mean, like, look, look at lighting, right? How, how it reflects. It's hard, isn't it? All right, so what does that mean then? So they had a little bit more coarser um, part, like particles, and it does basically need to be broken down as you go a little bit more farther. It should be removed though, like, because that was probably one of those, the, uh, Little bit bigger chunks of abrasives that were may have been just on uh, on the stone. All right, so this is a good um, <clears throat> maybe a good jumping off point for one of our questions from the Discord from mm -hmm. earlier this week. Um, I just you know asked all our Discord members if they had any specific questions. Uh, Knife Spa Berlin, who's probably mm -hmm. asleep right now <laughs> and will hopefully watch later, said, 
What's the best grit in synthetic for the transition to Japanese natural stones in Kasumi polishing? Mm. So ba basically, like, where do you make that jump? And, you know, in this case, what, what did you finish this Kiridashi on before going to natural stones? Right. So this one, so I did this from, so I made the bevel flat with the, uh, you know, the wheel, and I put that on the 1000 grit, um, whatchamacallit, was the uh, regular, um, I used the Naniwa Hibiki 1000 grit, and then I transitioned to the um, Hibiki 3000 to kind of try to get all the, um, everything out, the uh, little deeper scratches off. It's still there, but it's, it's not as much anymore. It does leave the bit of uh, scratches along here that the cladding. So I would probably do up to something like um, really nice soft 3000 or something. Then I will move, shift it on to the uh, natural stone. Because cool. something that you don't want to see is the uh, deeper scratches left from the uh, previous stones, right? So this particular one, I did it yesterday, was done, finished by some of the natural stones I had in hand, um, including the, uh, this uh, Shiro Suita. Um, th this relates to a question we just, I'm going to do some questions out of. I'm going to do some questions out of order because this relates to... Mm -hmm. Um, something that was asked pretty recently by Spoon Monkey, um, saying, how often do you need to flatten them? Do they dish far slower than synthetic? Because, uh, yeah, you're, I mean, you're, you're using the stone here, but you're not mm -hmm. really going to be able to notice that it's been used. It, it is, it, it's best, it's, it's best to flatten them quite a bit. Uh, I just cut myself. Uh -huh. I'll get you a bandit. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. The, uh, it's best to flatten them as often, um, but the um, it's not um, it's sharp. Um, depends on how like how soft the stone is, right? Like say for example, if you have the shiro suita like this one, I would probably be um, flattening them every other knives. Where if you're doing something harder, I wouldn't have to do it as often, right? So. Um, it really depends. Very smooth. Yeah, is it sharp? <laughs> oh yeah, at least, right? Yeah. Cool. So what, what are you, any conclusions about the stone so far? Or are you gonna keep working away? Sorry, I'm just gonna take a look Yeah. here. Yeah, the hagane, the, uh, the hard, hard part, gets really nice and smooth. You see the, there's no, like, few scratches left, but It is a bit harder than the, uh, say, Shiro Suita. I can uh, quickly put that back on the Shiro Suita and just kind of reset it. <coughs> but see here, this, so do the quick comparison, okay? I'm just gonna do the very quick comparison. We should just wash them later. So I'm gonna do this on Sure, I'll that. There is going to be my head. <laughs> and this is one of your Shiro Suitas? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Got time for a question while you're doing yeah. that? Um, Spoon Monkey was asking, anyone know what lacquer smiths use on blades? Whatever Nigara Sun uses, or whatever Nigara Hamona uses is insane. Micro thin, but it makes the edge pop. What's one? Uh, do, do you know what kind of lacquer they use on, on knives? Like oh, that makers? lacquer. Oh, the, uh, the black... No, lacquer. I, I think just like the clear protective lacquer. Oh. Let, let, let us know what you mean, Spoon Monkey. But yeah, I'm guessing they mean like the clean uh, on knives. Not oh, on, I not see. Not on natural stone. We, we will talk about stone lacquer in a bit. Right, 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 right. The, um, yeah, they, they just probably, I don't think they use anything super, you know, different from what the other people are using. So... Yeah, see here? 
I have to be a little bit careful. See here? <laughs> it gets, see the difference? Probably just going to let them dry. See the difference here between the one before and this? This gets a little bit more nicer uh, two-tone, mm. right? Than the, uh, the one that I just tested. The one that I tested, it was slightly hotter and slightly finer so that the, it wasn't scratching this bevel or the uh, softer steel part. It was actually making it a little bit more polished. Where this gives you really nice kind of contrast, right? Like if you look at it, sorry. Actually. Right. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, we can see, I mean, the the top, the upper steel, the softer steel is, is a little more kind of cloudy and the yeah. softer steel, or the edge steel looks a bit shinier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that is really nice contrast. So the other one provides less contrast. A little bit less. Gotcha. But the, um, it gives you really nice, if you work on a little bit longer, this is going to be probably fantastic for like stray razors and stuff. For, for getting a really smooth edge? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, which makes sense for the razor stones. Why, why would it give a better edge for razors? What, what, what properties are going to so cause that? The, what natural stones are good at is here. It's pretty nice and sharp. <laughs> the, uh, what natural stones are good at is its property, the, uh, the abrasive. Abrasives are what the, uh, the Imani sound or those natural stones people call it. It doesn't have as, it's not as spiky as the other abrasives, like a aluminum, uh, white almina or the uh, green carborundum that used for the synthetic stones. Therefore, the, the final edge becomes a little bit more smoother instead of uh, spikier. So, those edges are great for the knives that you use to push into stuff like a stray razor. Right, woodworking tools, yep. stray razors. Okay, cool. Ah, it's really interesting. Yeah, because I've always finished my straight razor on, you know, just a, a good 12,000 mm -hmm. Chosera or Nanawa, but um, I should I should try out natural stones more. Yeah, it, it will give the little bit much smoother, uh, easier. Yeah. And then those, you'll probably get less razor burn because you're, mm -hmm. you're, you'll get less kind of toothiness against your skin, yeah. which is uh, not great in a straight razor, not, not as desirable quality. Um, Doodle Snoozles was asking, are there any more natural stones or are they sold out? We have not released these guys online yet, um, but if folks, if folks are looking for a stone, let me know. Uh, the ones that are going to go on sale, um, I mean, we can, we can launch them anytime. Yeah. Uh, we want to kind of give people a lowdown beforehand. I guess if you got your eye on one and you want to know about it before we release yeah, them, just, yeah, let, just... let us know in the chat. Um, otherwise, we'll, we'll let them go in the next probably 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the ones that are... Going to be available shortly are the Shohanyama Natural Stone. There's uh, nine different ones in that collection. And then the uh, Maruka Nakayama. Yes. And those are all available through the link in the video description. Uh, it'll take you to the Natural Stone page on our website. You just got to scroll down a little to find those. So I'm going to try the uh, this Shohanyama um, Natural Stone, the razor type one. It just Numbers doesn't mean anything. It just really, uh, we just number them as they ca came in. It, it means that was the one you numbered first. Yeah. <laughs> well, Craft Brewing's looking for a razor stone. Craft Brewing, are you, let us know if you're sharpening like a Kamisori or a, a European razor. Mm. It doesn't really matter. I mean, they're going to be great for both, but. Very similar to the touch. By I mean, the, uh, it, the reaction, the, the, the feedback, it's. It has nice uh, grabbiness a little bit. <clears throat> nice dark black uh, slurry that, that just comes up as soon as you touch them. It has a bit of um, tagging motion than this guy. That means that the, seems like the number one is a bit harder than the number three that I was working. Softer stones often are a little bit more porous so that it has that the, when you're sharpening like this, 
it grabs it a little bit easy. Right? The, uh, it holds it. Holds it. Holds. Hold. Anyway. Yeah, it, it is a bit harder. The, uh, it does give a nice slurry like these, but it's not as much as the other one. I can feel it, uh, it drags a bit. You may want, this one, you may want to either use the Nagura stone to get actually slurry out, or use the, one of those um, uh, diamond stone to get its own th slurries out. And can you tell us about the, uh, the Nagura stones a little bit, Noto? Yes. Nagara stones are usually, ones that you want to use it for, those natural stones are the ones that's basically a natural stone that's made from the natural stones that's cut into this, uh, you know, size, smaller size, uh, Nagura size. Um, these are to get the, to create the slurry on the stone. And oftentimes it can control a um, bit of a coarseness, uh, some koma, koma or tenjo, or those ones will make a really nice uh, finish. But you could use the diamond to get the uh, its own slurry out as well, like I just did. And and, and that's just going to rough up the um, the stone and release some of that grit without adding other grit. Too. Exactly, okay. and also the uh, it. The black is usually um, mostly steel, and white is mostly stone, right? So you want to see that the a little bit of balance. Right, because the steel particles aren't going to grind the steel, so you, you, you want to make sure that you have enough of the white stuff, right? Yeah. So I just got the a little bit of slurry off, and... Mixing them good right now. It does give you a little bit more smoother feel. Well, while you're doing that, Spoon Monkey earlier was asking, what do we use Kiridashi for? For me, it's kind of just like a same thing I'd use a pocket knife for, mm -hmm. like opening a box or yeah, it's package the, or that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, the, uh, that's it. The, um, I would oh. use this for maybe if you do the leather crafting. I was just gonna say I started leather crafting recently, and maybe so maybe I'll get one for that. Yeah. This after I actually got nice uh, uh, slurry off using this stone, it gave very nice, uh, nice even look to it, didn't it? Yeah, it looks really nice. It looks not unlike the um, the Shiro Suita that you used there. Can you tilt it towards you a little bit? Yeah. Slightly oh, different. Yeah. It's slightly smoother. Yeah, the bevel looks a little lighter, yeah. maybe. A bit shinier. Yeah. Yeah, but it still gives you really nice contrast. And, okay, so what do you use a uh, kiridashi for besides shaving your, your arm? Oh, I probably use them, again, you know, leather cutting or any craft. Yeah, it pops my hair off really nicely. <laughs> That's good. Um, I'm not going to use it for stray razor, but it, you could. The blade, the blade might be a little thick. It might give you a little razor burn. No, it's pretty thin. Like, you, you want to try? <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, okay, that's really oh, yeah. good. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I, I used to sharpen a lot of straight razors that are I always store kind of angle with yeah. all day long, and that would pass my test for a customer, right? For sure. Right. Well, it's, that's honestly better than a lot of straight yeah. razors, yeah, right? <laughs> Especially out of the box. Nice. Oh, I kind of want to shave with that. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Not, not not the best shape, but yeah. Okay. Well, craft brewing. This guy. Which one is that? This is uh, Shohonyama number Shohonyama. one. The razor number one. Okay. That one I would approve for sure. It's, 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 it's great. It does have a bit of um, different shine. Depends on how I tilt it. But it is harder than the Chiro Suita. 
slightly hotter than the number three, but this uh, this one is quite quite nice. nice. Quite nice. I, I actually liked it. All right. Well, I'm going to release the inventory on these stones. Okay. So if people want to grab them, if you're if you're chomping at the bit to grab that two thousand dollar natural stone, um, it should be available online in okay. a matter of seconds. Okay. Should I try that one of those one of those? Um, I, I'm actually curious, so I'm gonna actually try this. Um, this one here is the uh, Nakayama. I never got a chance to try Nakayama stone. Nakayama is one of those like mountains like so hard to get. Um, and it is Maruka, so the Kato, Kato from Kato Kozan. Um, I'm pretty excited in what kind of uh, edge and look that, that gives. So, you to try, maybe? Yeah. So this one here, is the uh, Maruka, um, Nakayama, and it's called Sangata. The uh, sun is, uh, they, call, they, they write it in katakana form, but it's, it's S-A-N. It's the sun is the type, ooh, the, the shape. All right, well, first impressions. You, <laughs> you seem excited it's, about um, that one. It's, it's different. It does have a bit, say, when I tried the uh, the uh, Shohon Yama, the, the last one, it was a bit tagging. This is a bit smoother. Um, the steel particle comes off from the uh, edge pretty easy and fast. Okay, real quick, um, if you are looking to buy one of these, um, it's still in, on the collection, it still says out of stock for the Maruka and Shohan Yama, but uh, they are in stock. If you click on it and go to the product page, it will be available to add to your cart. Um, some yeah, technical, technical, blah, blah, something or other. That's my answer. But yeah, you can, you can get them now. Hmm. Interesting. 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 Sorry. I don't know, like... Um, I mean, people are here to watch you nerd out. So, uh, what, what's going on? What's what's interesting? The it doesn't have so this the last stone that I was using. It had a bit more tagging. It's like it doesn't slide as smooth as this. So it, this slide pretty nice and smooth. It gives you quite a bit of um, black slurry. Still has a little bit of a. Um, tagging but the edge is really nice and even little less contrast I think what do you think Nathan little less Sorry, we switched the handshot there. All right, give us give us a tilt. Little less. Yeah, contrast. definitely a little more consistent on both pieces. I mean, there's still a distinct contrast, but um, yeah, both both part, portions of the steel look pretty shiny, and I would say the 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 shade of the softer steel is a bit lighter. Hey, our our friends uh, Nato's uh, <laughs> Nato's nerdiness here. The, yeah, the Maruka Nakayama. This is a fantastic it gives you much like easier and much nicer um, like even finish oh nice yeah oh that's crazy that's crazy that's that's really nice all right, place your bets now as to how many stones Nato is going to buy today. <laughs> I could afford only a few. Just a, just oh, a hint. Only three or four. Just a hint. hint. <laughs> yeah, so, oh yeah, that, that's really interesting. The uh, Quite a bit different. Um, just going to actually do the Ura as well a little bit. Because this will definitely tell... Yeah, nice and flat. Again, natural stones does not give the uh, the mirror 
finish. Okay, so look at the back here. Um, because that the, this uh, Kiridashi is not super, super well made, th there are two spots that's, a, uh, that's too low that I didn't want to uh, <laughs> press it. There's a, a flat hand there to focus on? Yeah. yeah. So there, there are two spots that's... Tilt it up towards you a little bit. This way. Yeah, there we go. There are two spots that's like a little bit lower that I didn't, you know, bother grinding all, off. That's a really nice polish though. But the back is pretty nice. Mm. It's pretty nice and even. Uh, I did previously polish the back Uraoshi with the uh, um, Naniwa Hibiki 6000. Then I put that on this one, so it's not like a mirror. But it does give really, ni really nice finish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. This. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'm having fun now, hey? <laughs> yeah. So this was the the Maruka Kato Kozan, the Sangata Nakayama. Oh, hey, we got some good news from Chris Lord. He said, he said, Mike said, uh, you can pick one out and he'll pay for it. <laughs> I wonder if he'll let you pick up the $2,000 one. <laughs> nah. That's great. You know what I'm going to try? is the, uh, you know, different, oftentimes a different color indicates different hardness as well. Oh, really? Okay. So the colors do potentially mean something? That was one it of could, my questions yeah. was it like, could, is that yeah. just natural s stuff, different, you know, elements making the colors? Yeah, or? elements making the colors, right? The uh, yeah, more, maybe type of mud. mud more maybe. copper, more iron or whatever. Yeah. 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 Generally speaking, uh, from my, my personal experience with the very, you know, s small selection natural stones that I've used, uh, darker stones are a bit hotter, right? So this one here, another variance from the Shohonyama with the uh, no mound name attached to it. So we don't know. Um, Imanishi-san didn't even know where, where they are made. But this one here is the uh, number, so size 60, number 2, 60-2. So it's kind of a hard. So here, so I'm going to test it on this one here. It's got a nice, I don't know what the, greenish color to it a little bit. Yeah, see, um, bit hotter. The, uh, there is a streak of the black, but the, it doesn't come up, out as the, come up or the, come out as much as the others. First few strokes, it's definitely it's hotter. You see here, the uh, contrast, it, it has less contrast right now. This stone may be really good for the um, stray razors, as well as the uh, plain blades chisels. Because of the hardness? Because of the hardness. Right. Yeah, because you want, I mean, as the name implies, you want a very straight, flat stone for a straight razor and a, and a chisel. I'm going to get a little bit of slurry. Good time for me to blast through a few comments slash questions. Yeah. Okay, JJ Shane said, I'm going to head to sleep now. This is a while ago, but I'm going to head to sleep. <laughs> Tell me, Naoto, I said hi. Hi, Naoto hi. from JJ Shane. <laughs> Hope you watch the rest of the show later. Um, <clears throat> ba -ba -ba. And Dr. Robert Branch, like a while ago, just said, as an amateur, this is great information. Merlin Crow said, greeting from the Netherlands, folks. Greetings. Greetings. Um, DHOP310, returning viewer, said, Ohiri, Ohiri, jeez, i Ohira? dyslexic today. I know how to say that word. Ohira Renge Suita is the crown jewel of my collection. Oh, uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty sick stone. Um, Al Woodworks had a really good question. Um, another regular viewer. Why are these mines closed? And if the stones are worth so much money, why is nobody opening the mine again? Because it's going to get more expensive as you, as you keep them. No, not really. Not many actually people. <laughs> not many people are uh, doing their work anymore. It's the... Um, it's, you know, one of those things that the, it's like a knife making, right? The, uh, 
it's it's a dangerous um, work and and a lot of places really really good layer known as Tomae stones already been excavated. Mm. So there aren't that many to make it I guess I guess financially uh, feasible. There may be, but the but the ones that's in the mine are not worth as much as the ones already been mined. So, so basically, they've just taken most of the good ones already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Interesting. This is still pretty good. I, yeah. I just like. And also, mining sucks and isn't isn't a good job. No. So it's not not a ton of people out there itching to get into the mines. You know, maybe maybe get some of those kids that like playing Minecraft and see if they want to go mine natural stones. Generally, this uh, stone, the that was the six type, sixty type two. As long as you actually put let get the little bit of slurry out, it gives you a little bit more even finish. You see here. Yeah. You just flatten your hand out a bit there. Just bring your fingers up like level and towards me a little bit. Yeah. So what are we looking for there? So it is much evener than the uh, when I first started using this. The, it was a bit more, um, what you call it, the um, harder. So it was actually making a little bit more uneven throughout this uh, blade or the bevel. It's nice and even, nice and smooth. Yeah, the bit harder, again, it is fantastic for something like um, something like the stray razors. See, the, it does tag a little bit without, the, uh, without making a slurry or building the slurry. But I think, uh, yeah. My skin's so dry. <laughs> Start a Kickstarter to get now to some uh, some some moisturizer. I got some lotion in my in my office if you want some. Oh, that's, that's fine. All right. Just Don't shave dry skin. It's not fun. No. But you know what though? This is so smooth that like I've been trying like, f since yesterday. Like I, I you know because I had to flatten the bevel and you know do the backside flat. Raoshi and uh, Omote as well. And what I found is that the ones that I finished with the natural stones, like they're so smooth that I'm like, oh yeah, right, that's the, I don't need any lotions or anything to shave. They're that sharp that you don't need to put anything on your skin. No. I, I mean, I would. My, I my would skin's still. Pretty sensitive. Yeah, I was going to say, don't, I would don't still, shave dry, but... even with a really sharp blade, but that's cool. I haven't busted out my straight razor for a while, but I should use it for trimming my beard mm. next week. Yeah, it's nice and smooth. Mm. This also is great stone. It is a bit harder, a bit harder than the, I don't know if I proof, proved it, but a bit harder than the uh, those uh, two stones that, um, the little bit lighter color stones that I used. Okay, what's next? Should I try a little bit of $2,000? Yeah, let's do it. Let's try the $2,000 whetstone. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think anybody's like chomping at the bit for this one, and, and it's going to be pretty hard to know, you know. I don't think anybody's going to buy it if they don't know what it does and why it's awesome, so. so uh, tiny bit of water. Yeah, let's, okay. let's give it a go. Well, okay. Keep the questions coming, folks. Yep. Um, Andrew Anderson said, I don't know if this is the Andrew Anderson, but I've been watching your channels for a couple weeks now. Glad to catch a live stream, especially on this subject. Okay. All right, you're going to go? Mmm. Mmm. Nice. So, okay, so are you just full mm. of it, or are you, do you actually notice something after that few strokes? The, uh, it's grabbiness. The, how soft the stone is. Uh, drags or it, it has the enough lubrication. Um, some stones, 
they don't like the, the blade doesn't move as smooth. Good the uh, good finish. Nice. Uh, some stones are really hard. That takes a little while to get the um, what you call it the uh, the slurry. This is also generally speaking the ones that I've been testing today. It's pretty good. It's not it's too soft. Like some of them. They, as soon as you put the blade on, the gets that little bit whitish um, slurry, mm -hmm. which often like come in from that stone. So this, that means the stone's just crumbling too quickly. It's a bit faster, yeah. right? But this one is, I guess it's the balance, balance thing, right? The uh, how much abrasives to expose and how mm -hmm. much. Um, Yeah, how much um, abrasives to expose, how much stone to wear, how much ste uh, steel to be taken off, I guess. It's fantastic. Um, one of the things that the, uh, you want to be a little, not careful, you could certainly sharpen your stainless steel. You could. It may not work as the... Um, like if that the stone the steel is very high in the carbides, uh, oftentimes carbides are a little bit hotter than the uh, those the abrasive that's in the uh, natural stones. So it, it just grinds the steel matrix itself, but it doesn't work on the carbides. So what happens is that the uh, it does not get as smooth as the um, the sharpening a carbon steel. Are the carbides too hard, or why is it? Carbides too hard. Okay, yeah. gotcha. The, uh, Interesting. Morse hardness, like some of the t carbides, especially like tungsten carbides. Yeah. They were like nine, I think, on the okay. scale. So it doesn't even scratch. Because I had always heard people saying like, oh, natural stones don't always work well for for stainless steel, and it kind of just sounds like something somebody would make up because it sounds right. Uh, but that's that's good to know. I like to know the science. I I think that's what it is. Um, I don't know back backing, but. Well, blank blank uh, informed us that he's still listening, uh, mm -hmm. but is uh, in the middle of folding wrought iron to refine it for some sand mic cladding. Oh. He's been making some pretty awesome knives this year and, and showing them off it's in our crazy. Discord. Um, really, really beautiful work. Um, but but yeah, I bet blank blank knows the answer to, to why natural stones don't always work well. On Sorry, I'm just gonna check steel. on the lighting here. I know I'm off camera. How dare you? Ish. Alrighty, so this is what I noticed. Okay, so I'm just gonna show show off here. Flat edge. Beautiful. It is. Um, I worked a little bit and you know built the slurry. I didn't build slurry using the uh, diamond stone, but um, this gave Little bit much more mellower type of um, color. It's evener, and there was one spot that I always like felt when I'm like churning and spinning the night the blade. There's one always angle that made the um, made to show that little bit of deeper scratches, but it definitely has little less. Yeah, it looks extremely consistent compared to any of the other ones we've used today. Really, yeah. it's super nice, and it works really well with the carbon steel. Carbon steel, I think. Um, not quite sure how well it's gonna work with the other type. And often, you know, like you know how hard the steel is, and how much carbide is left, and stuff like that. That that affects the. Um, that affects that, um, you know, how this 
reacts, how blade reacts to the stone and stuff. So there's, again, no definitive answers, but so far it's been getting really nice uh, results, some bit softer. Um, general kind of trend has been the, um, the little bit of darker color, greenish color ones are slightly hotter, but still works pretty well with the uh, slurry built. Um, and the lighter color ones are a bit, bit softer, gives you consistent finish, a bit easier. Cool. All right, well, vanadium, or, uh, vanadium, blank blank said vanadium carbide are also, yeah. there we go, now I'm not muted. Vanadium carbide are also harder than the abrasive and some synthetic stones like aluminum oxide and some silicone carbide. Um, the M thought that it should not be because of carbides as you create a lot of them, if not more, in carbon steel. But it, isn't it the type of carbide? Yeah, yeah. It's, type it, of carbide. It's, it's the specifically carbides that are very hard. Like, so what? Tungsten? Yeah, so like the vanadium carbides, tungsten carbides. Right, which wouldn't exist in carbon steel. No, no. Gotcha. Okay, cool. The carbon steel does have the carbides, smaller amount, especially the, uh, when it's heat treated. Um, Properly, it will have less car uh, steel carbides or iron carbides, uh, which is called the cementite. Cementite is a little bit harder, but the purpose of making steel uh, hard for knives is to make a so-called martensite, which is not a carbide. Right. Martensite is the uh, entrapment of carbon inside of the steel structure. Instead of, I mean, I mean carbides is the uh, uh, steel and carbon uh, together with the electrons, right? So, slightly different. Cool. Um, all right, some more questions. Mm -hmm. Was there anything else particular you wanted to do, or can we blast through some of these questions we've had? I, you can blast through some questions. Right. I'm going to... I want to try it a few more. Yeah, you experiment a little more. If, if folks, if you want to see, we got about 45 minutes left today. If you want to see now to experiment with any other particular so, type of stone, let us know. Um, Doodle Snoodles said, where can you, we've had a few people asking about cashew lacquer. I have no yeah, idea yeah, yeah, what yeah, that yeah. is, so I'm excited to learn. Yeah. Um, do you, do you, do you wear, I'm guessing, do you know where I can buy cashew lacquer in Japan since I will be going oh, in a few months? okay. Um, cashew lacquers, um, you may be actually able to, um, order them online. The uh, but just be careful when you're bringing them back because you know it's <laughs> it may be one of the you should be able to bring it back to your country in a suitcase. But it is a is a is a type of locker that's flammable. I think so. Just just be careful. That's oh, gotcha. <laughs> is, okay. Does it have anything to do with cashews? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. The, uh, they, they're made of the cashew. Um, people were asking just about sealing natural stone. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. do you want do you want to talk about that a bit? Because there, there were, um, let's see, we did have, uh, yeah, JJ Shane on Discord was asking, mm, um, yeah, you know, alternatives to cashew lacquer for sealing. Um, yeah, and I think somebody else had asked the question as well, just about like what, and I just want to know, like, what's the deal? Why do you need to seal a natural stone? I mean, it. it, it, it it seals the uh, the side, right? We did have ones that were sealed by cashew lacquer before. Yeah, like way back in the way day. back yeah, when. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were doing those. this in uh, like eight, nine years ago. Yeah, um, I thought of it actually bringing it in a few times before, but I could probably look into it because it's um, it is a process. And it, yes, it is good because it is a sedimentary rocks, right? The, uh, and sometimes the, those sediment, they, they can crack uh, along the sediments. Mm. So, um, yeah, because there's nothing holding them together except, a, a, except you the know, super high heat and pressure. Of pressure that's been pushing them. To, yeah, exactly, you know. right? So, yeah, um, yeah but, um, oh, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, um, yes, the cashew lacquering, or, yeah, those things are basically, they seal the outside so that it, um, it can prevent or it can uh, deter or it can lessen the, lessen the chance of the, uh, those stones. A bit of a reinforcement, basically. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, are, are there any just like commercially available lacquers that like, can I go to the hardware store and get some roof tar and use that or is that a terrible, terrible idea? 
Why, why, there, why? there may be like some uh, lacquer type of stuff, waterproof thing that you may be able to. I've, I haven't done too much research into that, but you, you should be able to. It's, it shouldn't be that too hard. This is kind of weird. Sorry. <laughs> No, that's interesting. What um, and, and so Doodle Snoodle just followed up. Is there a specific shop in Japan where I can buy cashew lacquer that you know of? Um, I may be able to find that the link. Um, yeah, shoot us a, shoot us an email hello yeah. at nightcore dot com and and just uh, just say like, hey, this is a question for Naoto, and yeah. he, he can look into it next week. I'm not sure if like then I don't think Knife Store sells them, but. Maybe it's if you go to the uh, st play those stores that specialize in or has more natural stones, they may have those. Blank Blank says, I sharpened my razors off the lobster coarse stone. Makes you feel alive. <laughs> <laughs> Puts the hair on your chest or takes it off, depending on your goal. This one. Uh, this is the uh, Shohon Yama natural stone uh, 60 type, you know, the size. And this is the numbering is 60-1. As you can see, I've been kind of, you know, working on this one for a little while. It does, has not shown much slurry. Um, but it does feel it has the nice grab, so it should be porous enough. What that means is that it's not, it's, it slides pretty nice, and it uh, has a little bit more sticky, sticking feel to it. And it the um, it gives you a pretty decent look. I'm just gonna change the direction and see if this is the one that's given. All right. So Spoon Monkey said, "Okay, so so do I buy a kiridashi or a whale knife? This will be for odd jobs around the house, like you say. I vote kiridashi. It's got a bigger blade and a more. I love those whale knives, but they're not comfortable to." hold in your hand mm. they're great for like cheese boards i would say i would not want to like do any amount of work with them mm. nato you got different yeah. opinions yeah kiridashi is yeah good all right nato and i are on the same page bit um okay so i'm not sure if you can see um bit coarser bit harder as well not coarser but the uh, it's a bit harder um, so it takes a little while so to get the um, slur slurry out. Yeah, see, it's not like it, it's there, but it's not coming off as the uh, other stones that I tried. Should I mark it as? Yeah, I should probably mark it as a bit hard. Mm -hmm. um, And some angles, it does leave a little bit more deeper scratches. I don't know if there's any angles that, that has more. Yeah, maybe bring it up towards the camera a little. Uh, yeah, there we go. Boom. So it does leave this. So what yeah, this... a little more rough. What this need is the uh, good, either um, some other Nagura stones like a uh, Kumanagura or something, or the uh, just give the uh, pretty good. Yeah, even this, see? It yeah, needs, it's, really, it's really not doing much to that stone. It needs a little bit more, yeah. So, what this stone is good for. Again, it's the, um, what you call it, the uh, very, um, those things like um, straight razors, plain blades, and you want to actually work lo longer with this guy here. And, and what? What will your hard hard work be rewarded with if you spend time on that? Game? It may get a little bit more finer. It's harder stone, mm. so you want to work on a little bit longer to break those abrasives into smaller, uh, smaller chunks, I guess. And what's the name of this guy? Just for this one here know. is the Shohongyama. Yeah, it's it's getting better. Shohongyama um, sixty one. 
Okay, Grant Hendrick asked, given the limited mining in Japan, mm -hmm. are there other countries producing natural stones? There are a few um, that I've heard. I haven't tried. Um, I mean, before synthetic like you know materials were invented or widely used, you know there there should have been some natural naturally mined stones. Yeah, all I mean over people have been world. using natural stones for as long as they've been using carbon steel, yeah. right? All over the Pro world, probably longer. I think. <laughs> I think. So yes, what the uh, people in Kyoto say is that the uh, this fine stones are rare. This hardness, this balance, this hard like fine stones to give this type of edge is very rare. Uh, they want to call it, you know, the, that's the only place that get, get, get you know, it's mine. I'm not sure if it's true. Um, like Arkansas stones are natural stones. Yeah, yeah, right? you hear about those a yeah. lot if you get into like hunting knives or talk yeah, to yeah. any like old timer in, yeah. in North America. Those stones are natural stones and, you know. Yeah, I'm sure people from Champagne and France say that the best sparkling wine comes from Champagne. And a lot of very good sparkling wine comes from Champagne, but there might be... Uh, Equally good. Well, I mean, wine from the, other parts you of know, the champagne only comes from champagne, right? Oh, totally. But but <laughs> uh, but there's really good sparkling wine from other parts of the world made I the mean, same way. Iberico comes only from Iberico. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's are there not types of stones from somewhere in uh, like the Netherlands or not the Netherlands, but um, like the Nordic part of Europe? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I've, I know I've heard about ones from I want to say Denmark, but I could be completely wrong about that. Let me know in the comments. I'm sure blank blank has the answer to this as usual. Right. Um, we had somebody on like Haida Gwaii in Canada mm -hmm. mining stones. And I, I don't remember, I think we tested them out and I don't know if they really blew us away or not. It's, it's different purposes, right? The uh, I think those natural stones, especially from Kyoto, are really to finish their, the um, edge up to, you know, like razor actual sharp, right? Belgium. Thank you, Merlin and uh, Doodle Snoozles. God, I love saying that name. But yeah, be Belgium. Oh, they, Belgium. Place famous for natural stones. Do you know Merlin or Doodle Snoozles? Uh, Belgium Blue and Codicule, right? That was the name I was trying to think of. Um, yeah, do you know how fine those are? Are they? Because I've, I've used a couple of Arkansas stones and they were, in my experience, pretty rough compared to like the stone you're using right now. But mm -hmm. it probably really depends on the one you get. You know, this, after I got the slurry on and did the little bit of work, it's actually... So, any of these ones are pretty, it's been pretty good getting that um, finish on. does have a bit more, it does need a little bit more work, but the work, like, the work will be rewarded, I think, by... But yeah, but does feel like it's a bit harder. Bit harder and bit requires a bit more, slightly bit more work to get the uh, where you want to be. May not be the best stone to get get to the um, like Kasumi polish or something. Yeah, gotcha. Um, Mike O'Brien said, I assume the harder stones give less contrast on laminated blades because they grind the core steel as easily as the cladding steel. Mm -hmm accurate so basically why there's a why the uh, you know gives you the contrast right the uh, softer coarser grits is gonna uh, scratch up the softer part of the steel more so that that becomes more focus folks up so when you are uh, doing it with the um, both um, like about same grit it gives you a very similar kind of look to it yeah, cool. they're pretty, pretty good. That's one of the reasons why the uh, some of the knife makers they use the um, sandblast. So it it's soft enough to hard enough to um, scratch up the uh, a softer part of steel, and just hard enough to um, soft enough that it doesn't scratch up the hard steel as much. Make sense? Make sense? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Cool.
So that was the um, bit hotter. And I wanted to try this particular one because it's got weird um, kind of like wavy pattern to it. Yeah, it looks kind of like a wood grain almost. Yeah. Let me. Uh... Thought it may just affect a little bit, but. But yeah, it's got nice, um, nice sediments right here. Very interesting. Okay. <laughs> I'm like almost gonna try everything. Yeah. Yeah. If we got the time, what uh, what are you moving on to now? Okay, another uh, show, no, the, another Maruka. Maruka, again, is the, uh, so these are different, could be different mountains. Maruka or actual Nakayama. So that's the, um, that's the mountain that people just talk about. Okay. So this one here is the uh, Maruka um, type. So 60 on this side, but it's just thin. It's thinner. It may be actually pretty good. Like, you know, it's um, similar in color, nice and light, yellowish, um, like, tamago. And it does create the slurry really fast. And it does also give give the a little bit more whiter. This is a little bit uh, softer. It gave the a little bit more whiter kind of um, slurry as well. So it mixes it pretty nice. Okay, Merlin Crow said off topic maybe, but those big Japanese grinding water wheels, what kind of stones are those? Oh, they're synthetic stones. Although, although the Big ones, right? The um, although there's the uh, used to be the uh, big one that's made from the omurato, which is the natural stone, like coarse natural stones mined in the uh, omura uh, area of omura was probably in the Nagasaki area. So the, the, there were some stones that were made uh, from the natural stones, but now it's like all synthetic. The one that we use is the um, it's made by Noritake, um, which is a like really nice porcelain company. I think it's the same company. Mm. How's hmm. this guy working? Hmm, it's different. This is a bit harder than I thought. It's softer, but it's a bit harder because it the. Um, there is not much contrast anymore. Ooh. You see that it's a little shinier? Oh yeah, yeah, the whole thing is quite, yeah. quite shiny now. The, um, yeah, it's a bit harder. It gives you a bit more shine to it. This number eight doesn't mean anything, guys. Like if you actually look at the, uh, look at the, our website, it does not say anything like 789 that we have here. It is just their way to identify. It does give much shinier finish. I'm probably going to have to work a little bit more, but the um, this 8 is definitely harder. Well, the 8, sorry, the uh, this. 60 type thin is much harder than the uh, <coughs> regular 60 type that we use or the uh, this uh, Sun series. It's harder, it gives the uh, bit more, it doesn't give the really best contrast between the uh, Hagane and Jigane, but but if you're looking to get it more like same type of like contrast. This is fantastic. Like look, look at this. If you want a more consistent look between the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That looks great. I love it. Okay, right. got a few more questions, or did mm. you have anything else you wanted to? No, that's that's okay. good. I'm just gonna keep doing, see how how this does. 
Spoon Monkey said, what's the lowest grit stone you could get? Like lowest grit natural stone you could get. I, you know, knowing that grit isn't an exact thing. You can get an arato. You can get an arato like 220 to like, Omurato is known for very uh, coarse. Right. As well as the, yeah, like. So you, so you can get ones that are coarse enough for thinning steel then. Yeah, not from, not from Kyoto area though. Like Omurato and the other uh, stones, one is I know from the uh, Shirahama, which is the uh, about our our south from my, our house back in Japan. Omurato. And yeah, because like, I guess back in the day before synthetic stones, they need some way to sharpen knives that wasn't yeah, you know exactly. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. There's the uh, Omurato. There's the uh, Monzento, which is about a uh, thousand grit. Like if you look. At the uh, 1,000 grit stone, they they have the Akamonzen. Mm. Um, they yeah some of the hard like some more Monzento, um, which is really hard to get these days. I don't think it's not around much anymore. As well as the um, something like um, what you call it the oh yeah the Tamba Auto, which is the about 2,000 to 3,000 grit kind of equivalent. Mm. Is Monzento where you get GMO natural stones from? Hmm? Okay. Like Monsanto? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should apologize. <laughs> I'll, I'll put out an apology video next week. Um, Jack Howell said, my wife is from Calgary. I've had her pick up knives from the store for me when she goes home. She says, the people in the store are great, super helpful, happy. Kudos, we'll definitely be buying more. Well, I'm, I'm oh, pleased to hear I'm that, glad. Jack. Thank you for the kind words. <laughs> That's definitely our goal, um, so I'm glad we're succeeding. <laughs> yes. Um. Sorry, I, I just, it does definitely give much more even finish. Oh, yeah. Looks the same. It does leave a bit of um, shinier scratches maybe, but. Though this one's really nice. So this one here is the um, Shohonyama, wait, Maruka, Nakayama, um, the 60 thin type. Sorry, go for it. No, that's great. I think we've caught up our questions. If, if we missed your question or you had another question, pop them in the comments. We, we're sticking around for another 20 minutes. I've got a couple more from the Discord still, but... Um, speaking of Discord, I guess, Glamrock Freddy from Discord said, uh, or asked, pro, what are the pros and cons of natural stones versus finger stones for finishing the bevel? Oh, the um, finger stones are, should be, finger stones should be a broken piece, broken off piece of the natural stone. Right? I mean, it's just a small piece of natural stone. Um, you could use, sometimes I use the synthetic version of that as well. But the, um, so, few, um, few benefits for synthetic, uh, sorry, few benefits of the finger stones. One, if you have very long knife and the bevel is not as consistent or it's so hard to get all the uh, whole blade uh, consistent. Not, uh, finger stones great because it can touch or you can actually go into those spots that's really hard to reach or hard to get with the just natural stones, right? Say for example, um, this is a really good example. Here, as I showed you earlier, this back, the ura, this um, is pretty well made, but it's not the best made um, kiridashi. So there are a few spots that's, I don't know if it's capturing, oh, there's a, so, there's few spots on the back towards the tip, two spots that is not touching on the stone because there is a little dent. I stopped it right there because I didn't want to sharpen the back too much as well. Um, this does not reach to the edge, so I just left it here. But if I were to polish or you know work on this one, I may be able to use the natural uh, finger stone to get to this point, right? Another thing, um, but 
yeah, that's that's really good. And you can use the uh, you know various different uh, stones to get to the um, get to the point, but the or the look that you are looking for. Um, using that the this natural stone like this, it's great. It really tells if this bevel is nice and true. Um, if that makes sense, like make any sense. Yeah, it's it's good at telling you if you got high or low spots, basically. High low spots. Um, yeah, the if that the knife edge is yeah flat. Um, yeah, that that's pretty much it. Like, or oh, the bevel is really small. I wouldn't use finger stone on this guy because it's just too small. <coughs> right. Yeah, it's it's better for larger blades. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> great point, Spoon Monkey. It really reminds, great reminder of the impermanence of, of, of physical objects and, uh, you know, maybe ties into the concept of Wabi Sabi a little bit. Mm -hmm. It says, all this amazing, and all this is amazing. Unfortunately, I remember that no matter how much time you spend uh, or take, you, uh, sorry, how much time you spend uh, or time you take to get the perfect finished, as soon as you cut something, it all changes anyways. Yeah, yeah. It does. That's the that's the fun part, right? Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, somebody telling me about a buddy of theirs who every time he got a new car, he'd just key the door because then he wouldn't feel bad when he scratched up his car some more because he's already <laughs> scratched the paint. <laughs> but you know what? That's, that's... Especially carbon steel, it is hard, but the uh, it helps. And something like this, the... Um, the kiridashi or some like tools, you know, you don't, you wouldn't use them every day. Mm -hmm. I like this thing right now that we are doing. You know, it's not the stones. Um, it's certainly different st stone by stone. It gives you different. Um, the the this knife shows a different look to it. This. Stone brought the nice contrast back. Oh yeah, God, they changed. They honestly changed so much. Now that we've done several of them, I'm really noticing the difference. Right? Wow, it looks beautiful. This stone here is the uh, Shohon Yama um, razor type number two. So Shohon Yama has been that those razor types are pretty nice. Um, Especially razor types, I found it's a little bit softer. If you're looking for hard, um, we should probably sticky notes it. The um, if you're looking for very hard, pretty good quality natural stones, go for the um, Maruka um, Nakayama Type 60 thin, which is actually for the Maruka stones, it's pretty uh, reasonable. It's not two thousand dollars. It's like probably like three or four hundred dollars. If you're looking for some kind of like pretty good deals, those razor stones are great. I think they are really not that expensive. I can remember. Yeah, they they they, they vary, but they start off pretty reasonable. Like of the ones we got um, for for today, uh, we've got you know the Maruka start. I mean, start off around three twelve. You know, which is up there, for, I think, for most people. Right. But the razor types, like the Type Three, the really rough looking one that you used very first, it's only 135 bucks. Oh for, yeah. Oh, for a natural stone, it's pretty, you know, pretty good. Um, yeah. One of the reasons why. Yeah. That, 210. That, I think it go up to 210 or 230. Yeah, that's why we wanted to do this because it's, you know, um, it kind of gives better idea, better sense of what those like stones can do. Especially this um, Shohon Yama that we get it and we're like, because we can't really tell which mountains these are from, we call it Shohon Yama. Basically means they're from Kyoto. Right. It doesn't mean anything else. Genuinely uh, mine in Kyoto, but it does not mean any other than that. But you know what? This actually really does give really nice, even um, 
Also, the, the really nice contrast. I would like to see this finish on my Yanagi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so is this the one you're getting then? This, yeah. This, Wh which stone is that? This is the uh, Shohon Yama Natural Stone Type Number Two. Uh, razor Two. Razor or? Two. Okay, Razor Two. That's only one hundred thirty-five dollars. Oh, oh, so if nobody nice. buys it, you can you can have it. I that. should, yeah. Well, you can't have it. You can you can purchase it. Yeah. <laughs> That was actually pretty or, good. Or you, it can go into the Nauto sharpening yeah, lab look, budget. Yeah, look, like it's it's really nice and even. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, yeah. I would love to see that finish on my nose too. Um, okay, well, we got a couple more questions. We're going to take off pretty quick. But, uh, you know, if you got more questions, pop them in chat. And we'll, yeah. we'll do our best to get to them. Nauto, do you think you could uh, – Merlin Crow is asking. Nauto, do you think you could tell synthetic and natural stones apart – uh, as in, could you see the result? Two different knives, sharpened and polished, double blind, like? Probably. Because the, uh, again, um, natural stones will, won't will usually give that mirror polish. Especially when I'm looking at the, um, um, like, hey, Nathan, if, if you can actually grab a, uh, like, one of the 4,000 stones or something like that, I can... Nightwear? Yeah. Do we have the one on prop, maybe? Yeah. So, like, as I said, the natural stones, because the synthetic uh, or the, the abrasives are not in the consistent or same size, it does not give that very shiny finish, um, like a mirror. Uh, this does have really nice shine but it's kind of mellow it does not give the uh, really like in front like right on right in your eye type of a mirror polish i will show you momentarily as the uh, how what kind of the uh, shine it gets with the uh one of the synthetic stones even with 4000 grit that's a wait for nathan i'm just gonna oh there is actually a 4,000 stone kicking around, so I'm just going to use them and say thank you to Nathan when he's back. So I found the one that's Sorry about prob that. took me a while. That's okay. I found one. Similarly oh, you, it was like, yeah. yeah. You found mine down there. Yeah. So Great. I'll show you how they actually look like. Uh, while you're doing that, you got time for questions? Yeah. All right, so while you're doing that, Doodle Snoozles asked, do most blacksmiths in Japan use natural stones? No. <laughs> All right, easy. We got another question. No, the, <laughs> the um, manufacturers don't necessarily use natural stones. They, <coughs> some of the sharpeners may use the natural stone um, powder to, for the, synth um, the look purpose. Swordsmiths, though swordsmiths and sword sharpeners, they are the one. They definitely are the ones who primarily use the natural stones. But the uh, kitchen knife makers, no. They may have like one or two kicking around in the cool. workshop. Oh, hey, we got a couple of folks that have picked up, uh, or one 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 person that picked up a couple of stones. Oh, nice. Right on. Thanks, thanks, Kenneth. Um, cool. Uh, I think we missed a question from dhop310. Uh, I'm pretty sure we didn't get to this one, uh, but he was good enough to ask it again. Did you already talk about Uchigumori? Just in general, mm. wanted to know about it. So Uchigumori is the uh, this type of, uh, it's from the one of the stratas. Um, Uchigumori. Kumori means to uh, fog. Um, so it's one of those like softer stone that were really very popular and well it was essential part of polishing for the sword polishers um, nice and soft it gives you really and it, it gives you really nice um, finish that's like more like mellow type of um, finish if that that makes more sense um, but you can it's really good um, and when you break it down it, it becomes very nice um, which I'm gonna call it the uh, finger stones, but um, 
You could use them for uh, aesthetic purpose. Um, I don't. I have a few uh, still left, but the you don't have to. It's really for aesthetic, and I kind of want to kind of keep them for the sword people as well, because those guys, you know, if they're because uh, they primarily use the uh, natural stones, right? So. Okay, here. I don't know if you could tell. The finish looks more wavy. Like, it, it looks less consistent on the cladding steel to me. The, it's one of the harder stones. So the, um, some of the places, it, if I keep going, it will give much more, um, much more um, consistent and uh, finer. One thing that you will notice, though, is the uh, how shiny the how synthetically shiny the uh, core is. I'm gonna have to wipe them a little bit nicer. It fogs it up pretty fast. One second. Mm -hmm. I may have to do it a little bit. That's good. Well, I got a couple more questions yeah. to get to before we go. Um, ba -ba -ba. We have got. Um, all right, a couple more questions. Um, Craft Brewing wanted a recommendation for straight razors and another for contrast. So you said the 60 2 looked good. Yeah, 60 2. Yeah, and that one's oh, still available. And the uh, this one here, the uh, Nakayama um, Maruka Nakayama Type 60, um, 60 Thin was pretty good. For razors or for contrast? For razor, full razor. Okay. So the Maruka 60 type thin, uh, or and then any other any of the Shohanyama for razors that you would recommend? Shohanyama for razors, we I found, I think, like this was good for contrast. Uh, this I should have actually done this. Okay, so the, the the razor two for contrast, but I think somebody grabbed that one already. Yeah, that one's gone. This one was hard. Okay. So this one's pretty good for the uh, razor as well. Shohoyama, does it say there? Nope. The, uh, yeah, the 60-1. Okay, that one. No, 60-4 is gone. Yeah, so 60-1 for razors. Yeah. And 60-2 for contrast. 60-2, 60-2. Like this razor-2 is pretty good for contrast. Too. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, there you go. There's your answers, uh, Craft Brewing. Um, okay, a couple more. Um, Spoon Monkey was asking, what was the name of the 220 grit natural stone? Are they available outside Japan? As I bet they are massive. The Omura, Omura, Omura. Uh, you can probably spell it like double O M U R A or just the one uh, single O M U R A Omura. Cool. Um, yeah, we don't have any, right? No. Yeah. Any natural core stones are not really a thing anymore. Mm. Uh, Merlin Crow asked, any experience sharpening SG2 stainless steel with natural stones? I haven't. Um, again, it... Does like probably work really well on the uh, matrix, like the base part of the steel. It may not work really well with the uh, carbides. I'm not sure if the uh, if it's like super super worth it. But yeah, the you can probably see that the especially the shine edge part. It has more mirror look to it. 
And certainly if you look at the, uh, like Nathan, if you see in, uh, in person, mm -hmm. you can see it's more glare, where if you say, I'm just going to put this one on, I'm just going to try another one really quick. Number, Dash 4 is sold, right? Uh, Razor Dash 4? I'm gonna. So the. All right. So the uh, sixty dash four and razor dash two are both sold. Okay. Oh, sixty dash four is sold. Yeah. Oh, okay, this one's sold. Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna. Oh, use... that's who Craft Bray is. Okay, I thought that's who it was. Hi, right. Ty. <laughs> Long time no talk. <laughs> yeah, you have some pretty awesome straight razors. All right. All right. I'm going to actually try this guy here, the uh, Razor Dash 4. For, for a lot of, like, Razor Dash 2 is really nice for the contrast. So from here, from this, from this, I'm going to actually do really quick. Head, I think. All right. Okay, run sec. I gotta ask the warehouse guys something real quick. So, uh, be right back. Yeah. So here, when I just put that on the this one, it gives the a lot more. Yeah, I like this one. Here. So it, it may be a little bit hard to tell on the camera, but the, 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 it is mellower. The edge core steel is not as shiny. It reflects the light for sure, but the, um, it's not as shiny. This is also a nice contrast on the uh, Razor Dash 4. Has it been bought? <laughs> is it? Razor Dash. Razor Dash 4. Uh, not on that one. Yeah, Razor no, Dash. Uh, no. Shohon Yama Razor Dash 4 is also a great contrast on. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Um, yeah, if you're looking for something like to give the really nice contrast, um, soft Razor Dash Four, Razor Dash Two has been my favorite. So something like this here. I don't know. I'm like looking at the slightly different. But it's got very nice, um, nice look. It doesn't, yeah, it's just really nice even finish. Well, since I'm here, I'm gonna, this is also the, uh, so this is also Maruka, Nakayama. It's very thin and a 40 type. All right, we're almost done for the day, but if you have any final questions, oh, okay. pop them in chat now. It's 4 o'clock, and oh. i got to go pick up my kid and run Ty's stones down to the shop. Right. So, right. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, if anybody has more questions, um, you know, we can, we can stick around for a couple minutes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, thank you for everybody that's tuned in. We really appreciate the viewership, and we appreciate some of you waiting as many as three years for this episode to happen. Because mm. um, <laughs> I think... Like, blank, blank, has been requesting this topic since, uh, since, I don't know, 2020, I guess. Um, <laughs> again, Pigeon Volume 2 is out, so it'll be going to stores next week, and it's in online orders now. Um, 
We've got charity sharpening next week, so from uh, this coming Monday, the 25th, to October 1st on Sunday, yeah. uh, 100% of sharpening proceeds will go to uh, charities local to our stores that focus on the indigenous communities in those uh, in those cities. Uh, Masashi-san will be in Calgary, in the Calgary store, on Thursday, September 28th. Thanks, man. Um, yeah. And in Toronto on Sunday, October 1st. Engraving the, knives and hanging out. And yeah, the day time. day after the uh, National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. Yep, right, right after. Right after, because um, he he probably wants to see you know what's what's happening in Toronto. Yeah, you know there may be something, probably some yeah. events happening, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, thank you so much, everybody, thank, for tuning yeah, in. Yeah, thanks for thanks for watching, and you know if you have any questions, just shoot us in uh, shoot us in comment or the send us an email to uh, yeah. hello at dot com. Oh no, somebody said they visited. Canada all the way from Israel, but sadly they are still a miner and couldn't come to the shop and buy a knife. I think technically we do sell, we can sell a knife to a miner. <laughs> I think I was 17 the first time I came to knife where um, we don't like check your ID in Canada, so just don't say anything. Um, I don't know about bringing it back to Israel if you're underage, but right. in Canada it's legal to purchase a knife as a miner. I think so, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> E30 Birdie, <laughs> if I purchase a stone, will you also personally deliver it? Um, you know, Germany might be a, a long bike ride away. Um, I could try if you pay for my ticket. Um, Here then you go. I would be more into that because I'd love to go drink some pints of beer. Isn't that a, isn't that Oktoberfest? And by pints, I mean liters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But thanks, everyone. Yeah, um, thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they have a, a, a shop in Israel, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's got a new Hatsukokuro Bunko. Bunko, oh, that's awesome. Isn't that a Hikari? I can't shop? say anything in Japanese today. This is weird. Yeah. Um, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, the end of the long week. Yeah, my brain is tired. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thanks, thanks for everyone. tuning in, and yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, you live in the beer capital. That's very tempting. Oh. We'll have to talk about that. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> right. Have a great weekend. Thank we'll see you, you later. Bye. Bye. Uh, Ty, your your uh, stones will be at the store in like half an hour. So, yeah. See you sometime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Sweet, well, that's cool.